Ladies and gentlemen, this is Banana Let's introduce the starting lineups. Coming from the crowd, leading off in center field. Thank you, Mr. Young Professor. What a wonderful way to kick off the opening night of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour. Loved by our dear friends over at Zappos. We are live from George M. Steinbrenner Field in Tampa Bay, Florida, the spring training home of the New York Yankees. GMS is rocking and rolling with over 10,000 rowdy Bananiacs packed in, and they are fired up for the first banana ball game of 2024. After a groundbreaking year for our young sport that saw 84 games played across 33 different cities, culminating in the unveiling of a banana ball display at the National Baseball Hall of Fame, tonight the greatest show in sports returns to the diamond. This year, banana ball will be played in 29 cities and six Major League Baseball stadiums. Your favorite players are back and better than ever, while an incredible crop of new talent have arrived and are ready to make a splash. Over one million fans will watch Banana Ball in person for what will be a revolutionary year for trick plays, speed of the game, and countless other records that will be broken. And now you look live at GMS as the Bananas lineup is being announced and a rocking crowd here in the Big Guava. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Alongside Josh Tolevsky, I am Biko Scala. Thank you so much for be being here with us on the opening night of the 2024 tour. And Josh, it's all about amazing talent returning and incredible new banana ballers coming in. Yeah, that's exactly right. We saw a massive evolution of the game across 84 games last season, but now you get the debuts of new guys. Rack coming into banana ball, and the trick plays are only going to get better as Jackson Olsen and Ryan Cox form a new double play duo for the bananas, and it is going to be a record-setting year in banana Banana ball. It's time to take a gander at the 11 rules of our young sport so we can get a quick refresh refresher. The name of the game is Banana Ball, and this is the fastest, most entertaining game in sports. Rule number one, win the inning, win the point. In Banana Ball, points are the most important. If you score the most runs in an inning, you get a point. The most points win the game. But in the last inning of Banana Ball, every run counts as a point. Rule number two, there is a two hour time limit. No new inning can start when the clock hits zero. Rule number three, no stepping out. If you step out of the batter's box, it is a strike. Rule number four, no bunting, because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Rule number five, Batters can steal first. On any pass ball, wild pitch, or any pitch, a batter can take off and try to get first. Rule number six, no walks allowed. Walks are boring. So in banana ball, it becomes a ball for a sprint. And the batter will take off and advance to as many bases as he wants until every position player touches the ball. Rule number seven, no mound visits. Nope. Stay in the dugout or stay in your position. Let's play ball. Rule number eight, if a fan catches a foul ball, it is an out. You got that right. In banana ball, everything's in play, so you better be ready. Rule number nine, the showdown tiebreaker. If the game is tied at the end of nine innings or when time expires, we don't just play extra innings in banana ball. It goes down to an ultimate duel, which we call the showdown. It is pitcher versus hitter with one fielder, and the hitter has to score. If both teams tie the first showdown, then it goes down to just pitcher versus hitter with no fielder. And finally, if we're still tied after two showdowns, the third showdown is pitcher versus hitter, one fielder, and bases loaded, and all the runs count as a point. Rule number 10, the banana ball challenge rule. Not only does each team have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field, but for the first time in sports history, you, the fans, have the opportunity to challenge a ruling on the field. Rule number 11, the golden batter rule. Now for the first time ever, a team can send up any batter to hit in any spot in the lineup. This is guaranteeing the best possible matchup, the best pitcher versus the best hitter at the end of the game when it matters most. These are the official rules of Banana Ball. 
Thank you, Mr. Jesse Cole, sir. Now that we are up to speed, let's get a look at the Bananas defensive alignment here on the 2024 Tour Opener. From left to right in the outfield, it is Robert Anthony Cruz, D.R. Meadows, and Reese Alexiades. Third to first in the infield gives you Gabe Howell, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Eric Jones Jr. Bill Leroy starts behind the dish, and Ethan Scooja gets the start on the mound. It is one heck of an opening night. Defensive lineup here for the Bananas. D.R. Meadows led all outfielders with 42 trick plays, most of them backflip catches. And of course, you look at the double play duo up the middle. Ryan Cox and now Jackson Olsen with Olsen's move to second projected to see an uptick in those trick plays and Ryan Cox 144 last season the banana ball single season record and of course the R's for Rack Howell and Alexiades letting you know that they are rookies let's zoom in on that big old bucket hatted boy in the center of the diamond Ethan Scooja Mr. Worldwide a guy who has played all over this great earth of ours and he is just about as good a pitcher as we've ever seen play banana ball. He's pitched in four different continents across his baseball career, and now he comes and finally finds himself in banana land. And he is a guy tailor-made for the sport, a guy who is always moving, grooving, having a blast, and Scooja has an electric arm out there on the mound. He's going to come at you with a mid-90s fastball, and it is going to be really challenging for these party animal bats. The numbers you see there, video game numbers that was from the winter between 22 and 2023 for the Southern District Hawks in the South Australian Baseball League it is a powerful party animals lineup that will face him though Reese Hampton Dalton Cornett and Jake Skull due to swing it here in the first Fisher Thomas Delano Acuff Swan Porter and Baber behind them this is a really tough lineup for the defending World Tour winners as they took down the Bananas in that final game in Cooperstown a season ago to win the whole thing. And of course, the first three we will see, all veterans from that squad. Let's get it on down to the field as Bill Leroy throws on to second base. Jesse, Jesse Cole back on the mic. Fans, it's time. So on three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. We start one minute later than we would have liked, but the entertainment team still close to mid-season form here in our first banana ball game of 2024. Here comes Reese Lightning in his third world tour, second with the party animals. He was the offensive MVP a year ago. Hit 370, a 436 on base percentage, slugged 608, all three of those led the world tour. And what's dangerous about Hampton as well, the party animals have the benefit of a switch hitter leading off the ball game for them, and he is a very disciplined hitter at that as well. Scooja finds the outside corner. Count two and one, quick pitches Hampton, and now behind three balls and a strike. Reese drafted by the Detroit Tigers in the 12th round back in 2018. And five pitches into the season, he is aboard. He's gonna slam the brakes rounding first base, content with a one base sprint. Remember when ball four is fired in banana ball, all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the ball before it's live, and that was textbook sprint defense by the Nanners. Yeah, with Scooge falling behind 3-1 there from Hampton, you saw a lot of the guys, and especially the outfielders, get a head start on the sprint defense jump there. They were able to be able to hold Brees Hampton, a very speedy runner at first base there. And how about that as Cornette fought, fouled the ball off the home plate net. Vincent Chapman tried to run back and make the catch. A dribble or a bobble and an unfortunate <laughs> drop for our bearded ump. <laughs> Would not have been an out had he snagged it because you cannot get an out on a ricochet. Could get one on this one though. It falls harmlessly to the ground in DC3, just like Hampton on first base in his third world tour. Although Cornette, all three times a party animal, still in this count. Now it is one and two. Hampton has to scurry back to first. Reggie Liggins. 
the first base umpire right there to make the call. Reese 22 for 27 in his stolen base attempts last year. Check swing, Cornette able to hold up. And that one will clip him. How about that? This is the beauty of banana ball. He was not hit once all last tour. And in his first plate appearance of the season, he's hit here. And boy, that's Big Daddy Vava is going to come in there. Never nice to be hit by a baseball. Tears galore for Cornette. But his manager is going to carry him to first base. I mean, that's what you want to see in the leader of your ball club right there. Just picking up your guy, taking him all the way to first base there. And Dalton Cornett, he's going to wipe away those tears. I think everything will be okay. I think so, especially because the replay showed it went right off the elbow guard. I would wager he didn't feel an ounce of pain. Excellent acting job by the pride of Pippa Passes, Kentucky. And now the ever-dangerous Jake Skull with a couple animals aboard. We'll swing it here, still no outs. Skull, the only man in the starting lineup for the party animals that has been a part of all four tours. The banana on the one City World Tour as well as in 2022, and this is his second campaign with the bad boys of Banana Land. Fights that one off, he's behind one and two. And arguably had the hottest start of any party animal during last season's tour in the home run department, the sprint department as well. And it's a guy who also wound up leading the 2023 World Tour with six triples. He's an extra base hit machine. 44 ball, four sprints, also paced all hitters. That one will get the bottom of the zone right at the knees. Scooja fires away his backwards hat and replaces it with his beloved bucket hat. And that's the first bucket hat K of the night for Ethan Scooja, who was telling us before the game for every strikeout he gets on the mound, he's adding another bucket hat on top of his head. You love to see it. Noah Fisher, a rookie here in Banana Ball, batting cleanup for the party animals, manning third base. He was the Horizon Player of the Year last spring in his swan song at the, the old Northern Kentucky University. And he finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Yeah, and if you're Ethan Scooja here, you might go to the breaking ball here to try and get Noah Fisher to chase here. At times, an alarming K rate, and he's a guy who also ambushes the fastball and collects a lot of extra base hits as well. Back up the middle, it's a base knock. Hampton gets a stop sign from Vava. Superb throw from the doctor on a fly to Leroy at the dish. 101 miles per hour off the bat of Noah Fisher in his first ever at bat in banana ball. This guy can swing the lumber. Yeah, and that data thanks to Trackman, of course. Noah Fisher just collected his first hit of his banana ball career. Unfortunately, not able to get the RBI, but now the party animals' chances to score lie in the hands of one of their longtime captains, Tanner Tinder Thomas. Boy, that one just misses the inside corner, according to Vincent Chapman. And a healthy hack and a miss. Peter center cut. Mr. Tinder Thomas comes up empty. In his third world tour, all of them with the animals. And that one just a pinch low. He's back ahead in the count. Bender can't find the zone, and Scooja has to throw a strike or at least two runs score here for the boys in pink. Yeah, and you're seeing the Bananas outfield starting to shade in possibly and for the sprint defense, and because of that, that's why on 3-1 there you saw Tanner Thomas swinging away, hoping to drive one over the heads of those outfielders. Payoff is punched left side of the infield. Dave Howell there to grab the little flare, and that's an enormous second out for Scooge. Yeah, and great reaction, good patience by Gabe Howell as well. Just making sure to let that one drop in the glove as he moved over there. You saw Ryan Cox, who let Gabe Howell take over on that play to avoid a collision. 
And now we'll see if Garrett Delano can come through with the bags full here in the top of the first. Delano, another banana ball veteran in his third tour with the party animals. That one just misses the outside corner. Gives his cowboy hat to Vincent behind the dish. Bags full of animals with two down. And it's the off speed to find a strike. Scuja, four seam fastball, cutter, slider, curveball, and splitter. This one towards the stands. The fans could end the inning. No, they cannot. And Clangs just barely in the field of play. But a big one two pitch coming to a man who will strike out. Delano, four sprints compared to 16 Ks last year. When you look at the batting average and balls in play, when Delano puts it in play, they usually fall for <laughs> hits. But here, Ryan Cox with the backs full goes between the legs, and the club magician gets his first trick play of the season, and the bananas out of the first inning. The first trick play of the 2024 tour goes to last year's leader, 144 of them for Cox and 153 tries. No one was even in his general orbit. Dustin Baber at 93 trick plays, the closest man to him. No one else had any more than 50. And now we get the world's slowest race. So Scuja in his banana ball debut works in and out of trouble. Bases were loaded with just one out. He gets the flare out and ground out of Thomas and Delano in that order. And now you get a look at the party animals defense. Left to right in the outfield, Tanner Thomas, Reese Hampton, and Jake Skull. In the infield, third to first gives you Noah Fisher, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Dalton Cornett gets the start at catcher. And it is the St. Pete kid himself, Sean Fluke, at the center of the diamond. Yeah, and Sean Fluke, one of those guys who loves working with catchers that he is familiar with. That's the reason Dalton Cornett drawing the start behind the plate. And when we focus on trick plays in banana ball, it is Dustin Baber, 93 trick plays across the 2023 World Tour for the Animals. They are single season record, and it's Chase Acup who has made it a big goal to clear triple digits this year for the party animals, and heck, even try to lead the World Tour. He was very efficient, 45 for 50 a season ago. And as we take another check in on the world's slowest race, unsurprisingly, not a lot of action from our toddlers. Whoa! I bite my words. We move the finish line a little bit closer, and our leader is going to take this whole thing. A landslide victory. Grab yourself some finish line, pal. Incredible performance. And now we get a chance to look at the man who came into Banana Land as the exterminator. That was the job he left. And he's got a mic in his hand. Fluky. Might have a little something special planned. Hey, Tampa Bay, how we doing? Let's go. I need help with something before we get started. Tampa! from Hudson, Florida, less than an hour away. This is home territory for the man who is on the mound for the Party Animals winning last year's tour. At least he threw the first eight innings. Technically, Dylan Porter finished the job. Jason Swan catches that one as it tumbles out of the sky. D.R. Meadows, one pitch, one out. And if you think that Sean Fluke and the Party Animals aren't trying to get some new fans, you are sorely mistaken. What an entrance for Fluke. Gabe Howell, not a new man in Banana Land. He was a 2019 and 2020 collegiate banana. But this is his world tour debut. He actually did play in that first ever banana ball game back in the summer of 2020. And first pitch he sees, he lines it to his counterpart at third. Noah Fisher, lightning quick reflexes. And it's two pitches, two outs for Mr. Undeniable. And that's a heck of a reaction time from Noah Fisher there to snare that liner off the bat of Gabe Howell. And Fluky just letting his defense do the work behind him. And something we stress in Banana Ball is minutes per inning, how long it takes you to get through one inning. And Sean Fluke is on pace 
for possibly an inning mark under a minute right now. That has only happened one time in our young sports history. It was DJ the Invader, a 57 second inning last year in Des Moines, Iowa. This one, Crank Fisher's got it, knocks it down. The throw to first. Oh, not in time. It would have been the second quickest inning in banana ball history. But Reggie Liggins over at first says the speedy Dan Oberst beat the rap, and we'll see if the party animals challenge. Would have been, according to Trackman, 107 miles per hour off the bat. The party animals choose not to challenge. That's a tough one. You need complete conclusive evidence to overturn. And I would need a couple more angles there, or at least that one slowed down before I could have made a decision. Yeah, it's tricky, and it's a little too early in the ball game for the party animals to try and use a challenge here. And if they weren't able to successfully overturn it, they wouldn't have a challenge for the rest of the ball game either. So all in all, it is not one of these decisions that you're going to lose sleep over tonight. Who's the only man in the Bananas lineup who has been a part of all four world tours? Michael Vitamin D. And out of Davy, Florida, knocks that one up the middle for a base knock. Oberst will park it at second. And a couple two out singles. The inning winning run now in scoring position. And Eric Jones Jr. in his third world tour. The former Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins minor leaguer. And last year's tour leader in home runs with 12 as the fate of the inning in his hands, as that one barely misses. And unsurprisingly, what comes along with leading the tour in home runs as well is the fact that Eric Jones Jr. also paced the Bananas batters as the leader in RBI. That one smacked out into right center. Hampton can't get there. Eric Jones Jr. walks off the first inning, and the Nanners out in front, one point to nothing. Trackman had it, and 103 miles per hour off the bat of EJ. And what an incredible inning for the Bananas. Scooge faced six party animals in the top of the first, loaded the bases with one out, but escaped unscathed. Now he has seven, eight, and nine. Chase Acuff, Jason Swan, and Taj Porter due to swing it here in the second. Chase Acuff is not going to be an easy batter to face to lead off an inning. This is a guy who does not strike out very much at all. And look at this, Ethan Scooge and Villaroy setting up to surprise Acuff a little bit, pitching behind his back. Acuff in his second world tour. You mentioned he's tough to strike out. 18 ball, four sprints compared to just 20 Ks a season ago in which he played in 68 out of the 69 banana ball games. All of them starts at shortstop. Another hometown hero, pride of St. Petersburg. And he's just been a very durable player for the party animals and it was really a great moment to know that he and Dustin Baber were once again going to form the double play tandem and also try and wreck some havoc in the bottom of this party animals order. Acuff, the hardest man to strike out in Division II baseball back in 2018. It was when he was at Eckerd. He loops this one into shallow right center, but oh no, a trick play attempted out there in right by Reese Alexiades. He comes up empty, so it'll be a three base trick play missed. And the Animals in business with a second straight inning. Yeah, that's a costly play. You saw Alexiotis who thought he could bat it up to DR Meadows and try and pull off the trick play there. Instead, Reese couldn't even get glove on ball and for Chase Acuff, did not stop running. Now is 90 feet away from scoring here as Swan sends this one into the stands, but no fan will come up with the snag. Swanee, another second year man for the party animals. As Scooge jumps ahead, 0-2. Jason spent all five years of his college career at Georgia Southern. And back up the middle, he is so clutch. One of the best hitters with runners in scoring position from a season ago, he drives in Aka. And now the animals will dance. 
with a new version of their patented celebration right around home plate. Yeah, and Jason Swan did all of his best work down the stretch as the party animals won nine straight to take the 2023 World Tour. Across his final 29 games of the tour, 25 runs batted in for the party animals. He is a menace towards the bottom of this order. He ended the season with 49 runs driven in. Was fourth best on the team. Dangerous man sitting in the eight hole. Here's a dangerous man in the nine spot. Taj Porter with his first at bat in banana ball. Skies it to left. Rack coming in. Calls off Cox and will make a tumbling catch. No trick play awarded there. The important thing for the Nanners is they have their first out of the frame. And if anything, it gives Rack some style points as he is <laughs> definitely trying to put on a show for these fans before his first at bat tonight as you get a look at it again. How about that? That's a pretty graceful tumble. We appreciate adding a little flair to what looked like it was going to be a routine snag. Ended up being nothing routine at all. And now Dustin Baber in his second world tour, the second baseman at the bottom of the order. Remember, we hit 10 in banana ball to allow for a designated hitter and an extra hitter. Babes with a 1-1 count. Another man out of the Sunshine State. And a guy very much known for his trick plays at second base, of course. The party animal's all-time leader, but ended the 2023 tour actually on a nine-game hitting streak for the party animals. He enters with that same streak tonight. Coincides with their nine-game winning streak. And the fact that he's number nine for the animals. Feels like we're in the rehearsal here. That one falls foul. So we'll get another one, too. That one's for all the Nathan Fielder fans out there. He got really good grades in business school. Correct. <laughs> it was in a different country, though. So. A 2 2 count now on Babes. Swanee over at first base. A very successful base dealer. 16 for 19 last year. This one flied high to shallow right. Olsen out, Alexiades in, and Reese will catch this one casually after the inning started with his trick play missed. Yeah, and you saw Olsen not wanting to range all the way out into right field. It was a good call by Alexiades to call it up. That, I think, would have been a play where he would have loved to have batted it up to Jackson Olsen, but again, having called up Olsen, he decided to stay in the infield and just make sure there was no funny business from Jason Swan still at first base. A raucous boogie from the party animals outside their dugout as Reese Hampton takes a mighty hack and a foul ball, 1-1 one, one count. Let off this ball game with a one base sprint as Swan is checked on again over at first. to lay off the splitter right there. That's a great take. This one towards second. Backhanded and nothing there for Jackson Olsen. The official scoring decision, Josh Tulevsky. Uh, Biko Scala, I am going to look at this back on replay. For now, I'm giving it a hit. That's what I lean towards, my friend. Reese Hampton. That is what I lean towards. Yeah, he's just about as fast as you're legally allowed to make a human being. Here's your second look. Sliding attempt in between hop. I think it's a hit. Reese will appreciate it. As you mentioned, first time around. Batting average leader from a season ago. As that foul ball not caught by any fans. Colton Cornett plunked his first time. And I want to mention it again because baseball and banana ball never cease to amaze me. Cornette, not hit once last year, first plate appearance, hit by a pitch this time around as Jackson Olsen grabs his first trick play of the tour. We'll get another look at the great eight going under the leg at 21 and 24 attempts from a season ago. And now with Robert Anthony Cruz leading off the bottom of the second inning, let's learn a little bit more about how Rack became Coach Rack Online. He first got his hundreds of thousands of followers because he was signed by the Washington Nationals and surprised his dad. Here it is. Just got a free agent signing for 
for the Nationals. Congratulations, son. Oh, oh. The star here tonight, Rack, mic'd up with us on the broadcast. How are you living in your first banana ball game, buddy? Dude, it's pretty cool, man. This is electric. It's about three times the size of a crowd I've ever played in front of before. So that's pretty cool. So what are you thinking as you enter your first ever banana ball at bat? My goal today is to have a good time. I've given up trying to put too much pressure on myself. So I'm here to entertain as best I can through the successes and the failures. That's the goal today. You got a nice play in the field already. I don't want to put anything crazy into your head, but two home runs in your last scrimmage. <laughs> so you're seeing the ball well. You know, at the moment, this is a new place though, so we'll see. Rack, before you get into the box, I mean, how cool is it to finally get your first banana ball experience in front of this incredible crowd in George M. Steinbrenner Field? It's pretty cool, man. Your first live game since you were in the minors with the Washington Nationals. In a real season, that is. September of 2021, and you're ahead 1-0. Come on now. A little sawed off single, though. Oh. <laughs> Rack, oh, wow. a little more launch angle, and you had yourself a hit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for yeah. getting mic'd up, my dear friend. Absolutely, Have fun tonight, Rack. Thanks, guys. Will do. There goes Robert Anthony Cruz as you get another look. He almost inside out. Derek Jeter that into left field. Fisher able to come down with it though. I did not lie when I said in the last scrimmage of the spring, of which there were five, carry the one, there were six. Rack went two for three with two monster home runs to right in Grayson Stadium. And you get, can't forget about the second scrimmage where Robert Anthony Cruz hit yet another home run for the Bananas, was the scrimmage leader in home runs. And now he enters tonight again, feeling very confident. And I'm sure he's going to feel a lot more dangerous his second time up at the plate. Big cut and a cue ball foul. So we'll get another one, two to Risa Alexiades, the 2023 MVP of the Pioneer League. Manning right field, this was Really an incredible pickup for Banana Ball. This is one of the best players in independent professional baseball from this past season. Fluke gets rid of his glove, and this one is fouled away by Reese. Oh, it's caught by a fan! And his first at bat ends with a foul out to a man in the stands. Absolute chaos here in Steinbrenner Field! Reese Alexiades not even able to possibly collect his first hit as the fan catches the foul ball here. And man, he just continues to look up there in disbelief. Another look at it there, a clean catch by that guy. Booze rain down for him, but he is the first fan to catch a foul ball for an out here in 2024. There were 61 a season ago and we saw three of them occur across two games here in tampa florida it feels like there are going to be plenty more across this three game series jackson olsen healthy hack he's still ahead two and one in his second world tour our TikTok superstar was really excellent with the bat last year An above average hitter as he fouls that one off you're not going to complain about a guy who hits 307 with five home runs and 29 runs batted in. And even though Jackson had a really scary injury in the middle of the season, getting hit in the jaw during a pickoff, he still came back and batted 333 for the Bananas in the 10 games after. Ended the year with a 105 OPS plus. So he's better than your average banana ball hitter. 
don't know how he got Wood on that nasty changeup from Fluke. Now he breaks a curveball in there, and that one spoiled as well. And when Jackson was healthy, he was starting every game for the Bananas. 67 starts last year at third base for the boys in yellow. That one just misses low. Pinch below the knees. Excellent eye by the man out of New Milford, Connecticut. Payoff pitch. It misses. Excellent A.B. from Olsen. We'll see if he tests the party animal sprint defense. No. He will about face and head back to first. I think that was a wise move. First sprint we've seen by the Bananas, and the party animals played it terrifically. And what's incredible again, Biko, you talked about how banana ball is a really funny game. Jackson Olsen, 204 plate appearances last season. Only seven ball four sprints, and he draws one in his very first one of 2024. And his pitch run for as well by Malachi Flash the Kid Mitchell. Malachi, the Gainesville, Florida native, in his fourth world tour. He's been around since the beginning. And Ryan Cox at the dish. That one just misses the outside corner. Ball and a strike on the Nanner shortstop. And as you get a look at Malachi's tour leading 90 runs and 72 steals in 78 attempts a year ago. Son of Dennis Mitchell, United States gold medalist Olympian sprinter. Yeah, and he put a lot of pressure on party animals. Pitchers collected five walk-offs by his base running alone. And here, Ryan Cox lifts this one out to right. <laughs> Jake Skull goes down to his knees and worms out the trick play catch. First trick play of the year for the man who spent seven years in minor league baseball. And the worm after it, absolutely terrific. He gets the trick play because he gave up his positioning while the ball was still in the air. Shows he knows how to track a fly ball and he can celebrate as well. A souvenir for the fans. And we go down to Maceo and the boys for our player dance. Nanners up a point after two. DJ the Invader, and Mr. Electric himself, Christian Dearman. I hear Drake Toll has the fan who caught the Reese Alexiata is foul ball. That was a prank. You've all been pranked. Gotcha. Gotcha, guys. Got him, Josh. Prank! on your toes here at BTV. Three, four, and five for the animals. Skull with the big swing and a foul ball. Scooja with his second bucket hat that I can count of the night. There's this bucket hat number three, our statistical savant. Doesn't matter. Line drive base knock for Skull. Trackman had it at 104 miles per hour off the bat. Now Noah Fisher coming down from the stands. Coming in with the Toby Keith anthem to honor a true country music legend. Red Solo Cup, 
I like that walk up. <laughs> you understand why you were in uh, the show choir growing up there, John. 3 2 2 time. Scoot br Scooge brings in Cox, Olsen, and Meadows for the choreographed dance. Bill getting into it. Vincent shaking his tukis. And it's lined over the head of the doctor. Fisher two for two to begin his banana ball career. And it is just not surprising considering how well he hit in spring training for the party animals. And again, they had the confidence to start a rookie in the cleanup spot and he ambushes the 3-2-2 pitch. DR Meadows couldn't get any kind of glove on that banana ball and the party animals have a chance to strike here in the third. Not scolded like his first one was. In fact, it broke his bat, but the bat died a hero. And now Tanner Tinder Thomas. One one count on the animals left fielder. A soft line out to Howell at third his first time. A lot of traffic for the animals tonight. There goes Skull towards third. Throw from Leroy, not in time. Fisher stayed put at first. Jake after going 17 for 20 in his stolen base attempts in 2023. Perfect so far this year. And he's an aggressive base runner. Again, this is a former banana and he's learned a couple things about that green light special base running system that effectively is just there to say, be aggressive. As this one's popped up on the left side of the diamond, Ryan Cox falling to his tuchus, comes up with a trick play catch. Ends up on his keister. I contest, uh, I contest the trick play. <laughs> I mean, you know, or it depends if we want to be sticklers or just handing out trick plays left and right this year. But I want butt on the ground before the ball is in the glove. And Bika, that's a that's a very fair point that you make there. You know, we'll we'll put it under review with the board of officials. Okay, terrific. I'm not. I don't want to rob our trick play leader from a season ago of his second of the night. It's not what I'm here for. I just, I want trick plays to mean something. Garrett Delano scolds that one to center. DR doesn't have to move a step. Tagging from third is Skull, the throw offline. Cut off by EJ. And it'll be a sack fly for Delano. And the party animals push a run across. <laughs> it's like... That is a DJ dupe. They were ready to rage, and Dancing Queen came on. The, the bananas bamboozled the bad boys. Shark in on that prank. Good impromptu switch up on the dancing style by Garrett DeClue and company in there. This one lofted out to left center, and it's gonna dink down in front of DR. Fisher goes first to third, and Acuff will be content with the base knock. He's one for two. Jason Swan tosses money in the air. RBI single his first time. He's the reason why the Party Animals won the second inning and knotted this game up at a point apiece. Bananas playing at double play depth here, trying to turn two on a speedy guy at the dish with runners on the corners. Check swing, got the zone anyway. Count even at two and two. Great take by Swanee. Takes the bender down low and a payoff pitch. See if Acuff goes from first, he does. Pitch bounce back to Scooge, and he is, get, tries a trick play. Baffling move there by Scooja. It's gonna allow two runs to score for the party animals. 
they take a commanding three-run lead here in the third. That was a heck of a defensive play by Ethan Scooch and getting club on ball there, but tried for a little bit too aggressive of a trick play there. Instead of just going between the legs, tries to kick the ball to EJ, and EJ trying to hold the first base back and get the out. Couldn't stay on it. That ball dribbled away. And now the party animals are up three runs in this inning with a great chance to go ahead in the ball game. We always appreciate the trick play attempts. That one comes back to bite the bananas, though. Could have been a one-run inning. Instead, two unearned runs come across. And now Taj Porter. Chops that one foul. Numbers you saw on his graphic from his past season in the USPBL, the United Shore Professional Baseball League, mostly with the East Side Diamond Hoppers, did play one game with the Utica Unicorns, and he is blown away by the high gas. Scooja fired up his second punch out of the night and limits the damage to three runs. And not only does Scooja add another bucket hat with that strikeout, the fans here in George M. Steinbrenner Field are showered with donuts. Taj Porter, the donut hitter, just struck out. Sweet confessionary treats being tossed out to the full capacity crowd as you get another look at the cheese. Blown past. A man out of Mandeville, Louisiana. And it's a brand new promotion. Let's get it down to Jesse Cole for the first ever banana splits race. Try to do a split. First one around the end is the winner. On your mark, get set, go. Full speed, here we go. Split, split, split. Oh, what? Go, go, go. Full speed, here we go. And split, split. Josh, good effort, and go, go, go. Who's gonna win it? Here we go. Who's gonna win? Split, split, split. That is a slide. And here we go. To the Sometimes our promotions are amazing the first time you try them. Sometimes they're that, although I was entertained. Look, you experiment with your opening day lineups. Usually they're not the same at the end of the season. You can't guarantee that your promotions are gonna be that way either. Sean Fluke still pitching without his glove. His story is unbelievable. A breakfast bowl banana in 2021 was on the World Tour team for the Party Animals in 2022. Did not make the squad last year, but injuries allowed him to be added about a month in. And all of a sudden, he was pitching with the tour on the line for the Animals in Cooperstown, New York, in the last game of the season. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. Sean Fluke was at the tryout for the 2023 World Tour and was told that he wasn't going to make the team. And of course, the Bananas added him because of his entertainment value, but he turned out a 128 ERA plus. He was 28 percentage points better than the tour average pitcher. And what's more, wins the final game in Cooperstown, New York to get the tour for the party animals. He went from the exterminator to Banana Land's Mr. Undeniable. And one of the twin princes of Banana Land, Bill Leroy draws a sprint in his first trip to the dish in his seventh season as a banana. Four collegiately, this is year three as a pro for Bill. And to the top of the order we go. With the catcher aboard, the center fielder, D.R. Meadows, he popped out to first on the first pitch he saw tonight. He's behind 0-1 on that big 12-6 curveball from Fluke. Another bender. Another strike. And that's what Sean Fluke does best. Again, not a guy who wants to overpower you with his stuff there on the mound. He's going to go to those curveballs to try and get you out. And here, it's a slow dribbler. Noah Fisher wanted to see if that ball might roll foul. Instead, picks it up 
And that is an infield single for the Dr. D.R. Meadows, who is a very speedy base runner for the Nanners. Traditional bunting will get you ejected in banana ball, but swinging bunts are perfectly legal. That was a beauty. Really, Noah Fisher's only chance of preventing the single would have been avoiding the ball completely. Still getting used to how fast the man out of Vidalia, Georgia is, who now resides on first base. Two men on, nobody out. The dangerous Gabe Howell with the 1-1 count after he smoldered a line drive to third his first time. Yeah, and again, Gabe Howell. This isn't his first foray into banana ball. He actually collected the very first walk-off in banana ball history in the second ever game. But here, cannot produce for the bananas as that one is lined out to right field and Jake Skull will drift over and catch the first out here for the party animals. Respect from Bill Leroy for the howitzer of a right arm. That the Texas Rangers first round draft pick in 2010 has. He nails the cutoff perfectly. Now Dan Oberst chops that one towards Blue. Cornette will try and make the play. Flip to first offline. It's an infield single for Oberst, who blasted a ball at 107 miles per hour, according to Trackman, his first time to Fisher at third. That was a base knock. Dan just taps this one on a 68 mile an hour bender and too slow off the bat for even Trackman to track. It's a tale of two singles for Dan Obers for <laughs> sure, but it worked out for him, especially considering again, he owned Sean Fluke over the last score as he went 18 for 36 against the righty. Good for a 500 batting average. Now Michael Vitamin D, single up the middle his first time. Taps this one to first, Swan grabs it, there's one, throw to first, Leroy's in trouble. He's in a pickle and will be tagged out by Noah Fisher. Just your typical three, two, five double play gets Fluke out of a bases loaded one out jam. Unbelievable reaction time and great IQ from Jason Swan. Getting to the bag, throwing quickly to Dalton Cornett and the party animals also executed that pickle defense to perfection. Only one throw necessary to get the out. And as we head to the top of the fourth inning, party animals now up a point as they won that frame three runs to zip. A very special treat for us. Two of the four guys out on the diamond, Ryan Cox and Jackson Olsen, mic'd up. How you guys living? Beautiful, Biko. It's good to be back. Uh, it is wonderful to have you guys back. How special does it feel to be back in front of over 10,000 fans you know, to kick off the tour? You know, it feels great, Biko. Um, DR's really upset that he wasn't able to get mic'd up as well. Um, so maybe you have to get him next time. Uh, DR, <laughs> I cannot promise you tomorrow night, but <laughs> very soon. Very soon, my dear friend. Oh, man. Look. Atmosphere, not too bad, huh, fellas? Yeah. What do you think? 10,000 people. Tampa was one of my favorite spots. Right up. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Can you guys hear Ryan? Vigo, can you hear me? Oh, I've got you guys both beautifully. Oh, oh maybe that was it. <laughs> Hello? Hello! Hello! Hello, beautiful people. Oh, there you are. Hello! All right, we're back oh. and better than ever. Oh, Dustin Baber yes. will lead off the frame, so it's going to be 10-1 and 2. Zach Phillips, the new man on the mound, he replaces Ethan Scuja, who had a very sweaty three innings on the bump. Oh, and Vince. Let's go, Vince. One pitch into the inning, Vincent Chapman is going to put on the show himself. Oh, put the air. Let's go. A legend. Have you guys picked up any dance moves from Vince? This one. But I, I can't do it as well as him. I don't think Ryan can. I don't think any of us can. Jackson Ryan, would you believe me if I told you that that mask throw from Vince just registered 85 miles an hour on Trackman? Wow. Vince, honestly. He's a different beast. Also, Ryan, I'm going to drop the trick. And yeah, I'm about to get a trick play right here. I believe it. Pretty apropos. Oh, no, no, no. You got the first trick play of the tour, Coxie. Yeah. 
It felt right. I got this one too. Oh! <laughs> Give me that. Oh! Give me that on the mic. Give me that on the mic. I was mic'd up. I felt it. You're unbelievable. This is my best You're friend. Unbelievable. You're unbelievable. You're this unbelievable. is so cool. That's three of them. And that might be the best trick play of the night right there. Unreal. Ryan Cox between the legs and the treble. A real beauty. Are you kidding me? All right, my turn. Let's go. Ryan did the trick for I'll do the second thing. Oh, Cox. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. Oh. <laughs> Good try, EJ. No scoop from EJ. That's a base hit. Soft tapper. Reese Hampton, as fast as they make them, is putting on the burners. It's bold enough on a soft tapper with Reese barreling down the line to attempt a trick play at all. Yeah, that's uh, the message this year is many right, trick plays as possible. Double play. Here we go. Give us one. Yep. Oh! I got it. <laughs> <laughs> That was cool. I don't know what just happened. That was cool. We did it. <laughs> we got it out. That was the old one, four, six fielder's choice. I guess. <laughs> I kind of panicked a little bit. I didn't get a <laughs> The replay's incredible. My heart rate's like 175. It was like we were talking to each other. And our, like the fact that we can also talk to each other. Headphones, and we couldn't communicate that one. That's pretty tough. It changes everything. I mean, I think what's on everyone's minds right now is Jackson, since you came to Banana Land in 2022 for the Summer Series, you and Ryan became the best of friends. And now with this move to second base, you guys are the double play duo and best friends to boot. How cool is it to form that connection now? I mean, it is literally... Wait, stop. Fair ball. I'm throwing them out at home. You know, well, we can actually talk to Maybe not. Talk He's talk. getting waved, Cox! <laughs> Threw that way away. I got really pumped up. Well, you didn't have a shot anyway, it turns out. I didn't help either, as I was revving you up. That's okay. Well, that's what, that's all what right, guys, just while they're partying, we'll all answer this question. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so, when I came to Banana Land, I was pretty nervous, not going to lie. I was coming into this new, new adventure, and if anyone was like me, <laughs> didn't really know. And uh, I came, was like, hey man, expect to see you in Banana. And that was literally like one of the best players on this team and one of the coolest players that I've looked up to is now. Oh, very, very cool. Yeah, it was really special to, to get him in. And I remember the first day after practice, able to give him a ride home. And you kind of know from that moment that we were going to benefit each other as teammates, as friends. I've learned so much from that guy. And just to be able to stand right next to him, whether it's third base or second base, that's so special. It really warms the heart. And you can feel the love between you two every time I hear Cox say Jackie. Yeah. Jackie. Gabe Howell will end the frame. Guys, thank you so much for being mic'd up. That was one of the wildest half innings of mic'd up I've ever experienced. That was wild. Unbelievable. You guys are the best. You guys are great guys. Hey, have fun the rest of the night. Thank Thanks, you guys. guys. Thank you. See ya. Here goes Jackson Olsen and Ryan Cox. We had one of the coolest trick plays I've seen in my entire life by Cox. The one four six fielder's choice where Jackson definitely did not have to take that ball from his double play partner, but they forget they got the lead runner anyway. And then the party animals played a run on a Jake Skull double down the left field line. But when you're friends and you get to man and become that double play duo, you've got this kind of unspoken connection already. And another thing we're talking about is they spent so much time during the off season working together and being able to be a very formidable combo up the middle. And they really worked on their trick play. There have been stories about these guys going out to the field and taking 500 ground balls each and making trick plays on every single one of them. Their work ethics are incredible. What you have to do to try and pull off the madness that was the between the legs, dribble back between the legs trick play that Coxie just pulled off there. There's a reason why he's called the glove magician. I think that I'm gonna have to look back at the remarkable trick play he pulled off on Tanner Thomas in Des Moines a year ago. But that is one of my favorite trick plays I've literally seen in my life.
again, and one of the things that also helps is Jackson and Ryan can continue to kind of come up with new trick plays together, throw out these ideas, and develop plays that have never before been seen on a baseball diamond. Coxie, by our scoring, has two trick plays on the night. One is under review, as I mentioned. I want the keister on the ground to give the falling down trick play the TPM as we mark it in the book. But we'll put that in front of the coaches, players alike. We will assemble the brightest minds Banana Land has to offer and a fair decision will be made. So he could have three. Jackson has a trick play of his own at second base. And the first three and a half innings of their lives as double play partners is going swimmingly. That one shot out of a cannon from Eric Jones Jr. Trackman had it at 86 miles an hour off the bat. Tough play. Josh, the official scoring decision. For hitter scorekeepers, Biko. You bet your bottom dollar. That'll make EJ two for two, and the Bananas instantly putting Malachi Mitchell into the game as they're going for at least a tie in this inning as Rack comes up for his second banana ball at bat. He was mic'd up with us on the broadcast first time around. Nearly dinked one into left field. Fell into the glove of Fisher at third on the soft liner. There goes Flash, and he is one for one in his stolen base attempts here in 2024. Yeah, and you just know when he gets on the base pass, he's got one goal in mind, and that's to move up into scoring position. He does it successfully, and for Malachi this season, he's looking for 100 total stolen bases. Chopped foul. The inning tying run in scoring position now. And the kid out of Fontana, California. Lines it, that one ricochets off the glove of Jason Swan. It will tie the inning. Down into the right field corner, it goes. Rax thinking three bases. And he's got him, he slides into third, no throw. Trackman had it at 103 miles per hour off the bat of Rack as he ties the frame and has himself his first banana ball hit. It's a three-bagger. I mean, he blistered that ball off the bat, and you did not see him stop running one bit. He had one goal in mind, and that was to get to third base, and now the Bananas very close to an inning walk-off here in the fourth. Lisa Lixiades after... Fouling out to a fan his first time is plunked and immediately breaks into let it go from Frozen. Singing the pain away. <laughs> really cannot be a better way to kickstart some instant healing. And screaming let it go as loud as you can. Biko, are you more of an Anna or are you more of an Elsa? Well, I'm an Elsa guy myself. Ooh. Yeah. I think the ice magic she has is pretty OP, as the youth says. They do say that. Also played a lot of World of Warcraft as a kid. So seeing a powerful ice mage in real life, whether it be a cartoon or not, that's someone I admire. Big cut and a miss from Jackson Olsen. Fresh off of the mic with us behind 0-1. Can't argue with that logic whatsoever. Infield in for the party animals. And that will be a stolen base for Reese as he grabs second after being plucked. Big bender from Fluke misses the outside corner. Anna or Elsa for you, Josh? Uh, I actually think that I'm more of an Anna guy, I'll tell you what, you know? I feel like she kind of holds down the fort. No, it's a good point. He's there for the culture. Correct. Chop to Acuff. Throw home. In time to get Rack. Great tag there by Cornett. Acuff as sturdy as they come defensively at short. Saves the inning. That would have been the walk-off run scoring for the Nanners. And that's a tremendous play by Chase Acuff. Saw Rack immediately taking off and going for home. Again, 
Tyler Gillum wants his base runners to be as aggressive as possible. And even though the party animals get the out, Reese Alexiotis, because of his stolen base, was able to advance to third. And now this one on the ground. Party animals will try for the double play. Unbelievable. Baver bounce pass to Acup. And on to first keeps the inning tied. A twin killing to save the frame. First trick play of the tour for Dustin Baber. It's a beauty. And Swanee pumped up as the party animals preserve their lead. They are still up three points to one. Here is Emily Cole for her Bananas Foster Family. To raise awareness and help bring families together, we created Bananas Foster, a nonprofit dedicated to celebrating those in the foster care world while educating and inspiring others to get involved. Tonight, we are celebrating the Campbell family. The Campbells have been licensed since 2009 and have welcomed 49 children into their home. They are currently parenting eight children. So fans, please help us celebrate the Bananas Foster family of the night for everything they do in this community. Always a truly special moment. The group hug with both teams and at the center of it tonight, the Campbell family, licensed since 2009, have welcomed 49 children into their home. Currently, they're parenting eight. Once again. It's just the first of many Bananas Foster families we are going to celebrate across this world tour. It is going to be so special going from city to city and honoring heroes like these. And I have to apologize. My scoring decisions here tonight have been horrific. It's two to one party animals because that inning ended up tied. I'm all over the place. I'm just excited to be back on the mic for some banana ball. I think I'm batting about 40% on any time I announce the score in points here this evening. Can only go up from here. going to say they were all pranks by me. That's the theme of BTV in 2024. The B stands for prank? Correct. Huh. What's real and what's fake, you'll never know. Tanner Thomas passes the pat down from Bill Leroy. Zach Phillips out for his second inning of relief. Crafty Southpaw in his second world tour after joining about halfway through a year ago. Tremendously talented pitcher. 27th round draft pick in 2019 by the Kansas City Royals. Made it up to double A, the Northwest Arkansas Naturals in Springdale. Everyone here to Mr. Thomas, chopped right back to Zach. It deflects off his glove and he doesn't have a play. A lot of funky scoring decisions to be made this evening, Mr. Tulevsky. What do we do there? Another look. You see the tail end of it. I think Zach Phillips would want us to call it an error. Tanner Thomas would like an infield single. This is the way of scoring, isn't it? Just kind of stating the obvious now. Delano fouls this one off and not caught by a fan. It just went flying out of that glove. I, I think I, well, I would like to hear your thoughts. I'm doing all the talking. I'm perplexed, <laughs> confounded. Chopped to Gabe Howell, and he throws the ball into right field. Thomas will go first to third. And that one, I think, is an obvious E5. Correct. We, we are not going to argue over that one for very long. Finally, a layup for the boys in the booth. 
Gabe, as smooth as they come, just yanked that one out of the reach of Jackson Olsen at second. What do you think on the Tanner Thomas little squibber? Beak, I'm feeling generous. It's opening night. I'm going to give Tanner Thomas a hit. Okay, first hit of the tour for Tanner. He's one for three. Delano 0 for two. He had a sack fly his last time. He is pinch run for us. He's still not fully recovered from the sprained ankle he got in Milwaukee last September. Good enough to hit and jog about 80%, but he's off the bags. Run will score on this. Behind the back to second, Jackson Olsen never had a chance to get a cuff at first. It runs quite well. So it will be currently by our tally, the third trick play of the evening for Ryan Cox as you get another gander here. And it will be an RBI fielder's choice for Aka, who's one for three on the night. He has scored twice. Now Jason Swan. Quick 3-0 count. And this is what's really interesting about Zach Phillips. He's a guy who tries to work very quick. Unfortunately, he's fallen behind Jason Swan. But he's a guy who gets his feet back in position very quickly to deliver the ball. And he's going to be one of these guys gunning for the fastest inning in Ooh. banana ball history this season as wow. he nails the strike on a 3-1 count. A close call there from Vincent Chapman. Maybe a pinch generous for Phillips. Swanee hated the call. Ryan Cox, yet another trick play. And Swanee didn't even want to run. He was so disgusted by the strike call for Vincent Chapman. So it will be our first double trick play of the tour as Jackson Olsen sends that one between his legs. So nice, you get to see it twice. One hopper, EJ able to finish it up. Swan never made it 40 feet down the first baseline. And excellent news. Back out for his fifth inning of work. The pride of Hudson, Florida, Sean Fluke with the mic on him. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, it. No flu. Uh, I'm taking it no off. No flu. We've got Drake. You guys hear me or what? Oh, now you're coming in. Drake oh, Toll, take go. it away. Unbelievable. Tell me about this fluke section right here. How many people we got in here? Oh, um, probably about 50, huh? Yeah, 50 people. 50 people. Absolutely. Now, is he the wild child that he looks like on the baseball field? No. No. He is the most calmest of the three. He's the calmest of the three. Hey, hey, throw a strike. Just throw a strike. I love it. I love it. We got the flukes. Sean Flukes on the mound right there. Guys, we'll send it back to you guys. Boo. Attaboy. All right, here you go. Oh, shit. Oh, I hey! <laughs> that was a hit. Never mind. what a play, huh? Oh, my God, my hand. Look, good thing you got two sets behind you. Right there. <laughs> I know, I haven't got one strike out he yet. He gets all of his skills and abilities. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. 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 What's his best? Who oh. taught him? Oh, oh, it's Dempsey got here. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, his <laughs> only coach is here tonight. Wow. And his oh, oh, my God. Look at the whole thing. Yeah. And his so best pitch is his six hammer. I just lost my ear. Is his 12 6 curveball. Come on. Yeah. Yo, oh, no. Oh, no. Love you, kid. Proud of you. Love you guys. Yeah. So his best pitch is his curve. Uh, wow, so the game we're playing right now, you ready for this? We can't hear Sean, but he can hear us. So no now. way! No! Are you ready? Don't let him get it out of the park here. Come on! Come on, Nasa! <laughs> oh, yeah, he used to play soccer with the girls. 
and he uses well you tell oh yeah so the girls on the other team didn't like him playing so right the girls started calling him martha uh -oh. and that name just stuck Come on, he's definitely so if you want to get him to so call him martha oh this is amazing yeah yeah, yeah. uh-huh yeah and he's martha now uh he's martha He'll answer them, Connor. Got the foul ball. And Martha. Fan? No, sir. How about that? The fans catch the foul ball earlier to get a big out. Oh, oh yeah. Like so How about the fans double play the last inning? That, that was good. Oh, that was yeah. really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, what are the odds we get a Sean Fluke shirt taken off here? Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, all We're all going to do it. Everybody's taking their shirts off. Everybody's taking their shirts off. Does that mean I'm included in that? Yes, absolutely. I'm included, too. You are included. Okay, Biko, Josh, I know you still got me up there. You guys as well. You, you tape around, you will. You, yeah, show me the mask here. Take it I, off, Sean. Take it off. I'm not taking my shirt off. <laughs> I might take my shirt off. Oh, oh, come on, Reese. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if Blue can get out clean. I know if he does. The come on, Connor. Another point. Then we'll go up three to one, Biko. That, that would be the score. Three to one. It's two to one right now. Correct. If Blue can get one more out. Here. Thank you, Drake. The shirt will come off for the entire section right here. Everybody supporting Sean Fluke will go shirtless, and that's going to be something <laughs> else. All right, Dad, you call the pitch here. He can hear you. We're all taking our shirt off, Sean. Come on, kid. Here we go. Here we go. Jay Fluke said the monkey mask. You can't call the monkey to take the shirt off. Oh. He's ready for it. The shirt is untucked. The glove is off. Yeah. Ah. Hey, that's get it. Oh, wow. Oh. Good, 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 good. Uh, Fisher holds it at third just there. Yep, that would have been it. Now, one more out here from Fluke. We get not only the shirts off, but the party animals get another point to take us to the sixth with a comfortable three to one lead. And you see it, a whole Fluke family. So you said 50 of them, right? 50 of our Flukes. <laughs> Jay, confirm it. Your shirt is coming off, correct? Oh, I'm putting the head back on. Okay. Oh, the so, head's coming on. The shirt's coming off. Uh, he actually pitched here on the mound when he played for Pasco oh. and Amanda. Wow. Yeah. Now, did he take the shirt off then? No. Oh. no. <laughs> then again, he had a better body back then, too. <laughs> what are you saying about his body? Oh, here it comes. Oh, here it comes. The bounce in second. Fluke, yeah. will he do it? Uh -oh. Come on. their shirts in celebration. Correct, and as we head to the top of the sixth, I would like to let everybody know, Taj Porter, switch hitter, will swing it from the right side for the first time on this tour. Nine, 10, and one. Zach Phillips out for his third inning of relief. I have heard we will have a former Major League Baseball player making his Bananas debut tomorrow night. It is going to be incredibly exciting. We had 16 different Major League Baseball veterans play for the Bananas and Banana Ball last season, and we can't wait to have our first guest, another World Series champion, mind you, 
coming to the Bananas. A whole lot of World Series champions already have suited up in the yellow as Phillips blows Tosh Porter away with the heater. Split has joined us in the broadcast booth, as you can see, scared the dickens out of me. I would love to know in the chat if anybody has any guesses on who our former Major League Baseball player, World Series champion, will be tomorrow night playing for the Bananas. Biko, Split! Split told you that's what he wanted to know. He wanted the chat to know that. Why do you have to steal all of his ideas? Split can't talk. I saw what he communicated to you. you I, saw, I know we can't talk, but I saw what he communicated. I'm scared by what, whatever Split. that Split? Split, you're scaring me. Careful, buddy. Justin Bieber chugs a beer. He's ready to rumble. Zach Phillips quick pinching him. And, oh, no, wow. Golly. <laughs> Reggie Liggins has Dustin Bieber out there. What a play by Eric Jones Jr. I had Baber safe. We'll see if the party animals challenge. Corey Seager is a current Major League Baseball player, so we definitely aren't going to have him. But I appreciate everybody shooting their shot here. Johnny Damon, he's already played for the Bananas. Chipper Jones is an excellent guest. Guest, rather, would be an excellent guest in Banana Land as well. Josh would lose his caboose if that occurred. Dwight Gooden is a fun one. Oh, Doc. 2-1 count on Reese Hampton. Switch hitter taking his first at-bat from the right side this season. Two for two, couple singles and a sprint. And head three and one. Again, we'll see how patient Reese is here as he might try and take ball four instead. Popping this one up, throws the bat away in disgust. D.R. Meadows goes behind the back and comes up with the trick play catch. Are you kidding me, D.R.? I would tell him to take a bow, but he did it while he caught the ball. Incredible first trick play of the tour for David Ray Meadows. Jim Tomei, Derek Jeter. These are great guesses. I think staying on the Yankees spot here, as we are in the Yankee Spring Training Home, would be a good one. As we finish up our replay, we take a look at the father-son catch. Well, first you see Jesse cheering on the fathers to go try and track down their children. Two of them, two boys each, are scattering out in the field. And it's as simple as it sounds. You must catch both your kids. Father-son catch. Classic night at the ballpark activity. There's one elusive kid over there in the right field corner. As this occurs, I would like to discuss the newest rule in banana ball, rule number 11, the golden batter rule, which is in effect for the first time in our sports history tonight. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It was one of the rules announced during the 2024 banana ball world tour draft. And essentially, the golden batter is what the what the bananas and the party animals both have, and they get to use it once a game when they can send any hitter out to bat regardless of their spot in the lineup. And essentially, the best hitter can hit when the game is on the line. And again, if Dan Oberst were to come up and bat for the bananas in the bottom of the ninth and hit a leadoff double, the bananas could use their golden batter and have him bat back-to-back -back times. That is another way that they can utilize the golden batter this season. And you see Dan Oberst there because most likely if the Bananas use it tonight, it would be Mr. Dan Oberst. He's in the three hole for them. And was the best hitter for the Nanners a season ago. Drew Gillespie comes in to relieve Sean Fluke who goes five very strong innings. Pitches through five innings, that is. Will not get credit for a full five because of the one walk-off he allowed. And Gillespie, four bad ones to Eric Jones Jr. And EJ is going to try for two bases. Head first slide. He's out. An incredible sprint defense by the party animals. Hit it around all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher in short order. And the aggressive base running does not pay off for Eric Jones Jr. And with the count at 3-0, those 
Party Animals outfielders again. We're shading in to try and get there quickly. And how about this? We've got the fan challenge being utilized here. They want to see if EJ might have gotten into second base safely after all. We slap on the Riedel headsets and we'll chat with Zach Frangelo as well as an umpire representative, I would guess Vincent Chapman. And we'll get the replays going for our great folks in the control room back in Savannah, Georgia. Let's take another look, folks. Inconclusive on that one. I don't think there's enough evidence to overturn this call. I concur. This is the this is an excellent angle right here. He's call out. stands. He's out. Call stands. Play on. Josh, we're in mid-season form with the challenges. It's the fastest replay review in sports, my, my friend. VAR has nothing on the BTV boys. Big celebration between Vincent Chapman, Reggie Liggins, who made the correct call, and Gary Glover, the third base umpire. And boy, the party animals have really come a long way defensively, especially when you consider the sprint. It wasn't until about June or July that they were able to start nabbing the Bananas base runners at second base there. And how about this? They pull it off on opening night. Gillespie behind 1-0 will bring Acuff, Baber, and Hampton in for a choreographed dance. He'll grab Thomas from left and Skull from right as well. There is a lot of emotion in what is a very soft song. These guys are pouring it out out there. Behind the back pitch. And it's fouled away by Rack into the stands. Not caught. Robert Anthony Cruz, the left fielder. Soft line out his first time. RBI triple his last trip to the dish. And he is two for three to begin his bananas career. And this is exactly why you see why he was signed to be in the Washington Nationals organization. He ropes a triple in his last AB right down that first base line in here. Goes to the opposite field and collects a single for the bananas. He is going to be a real threat in this bananas lineup. Now the right fielder, Reese Alexiades, is the first victim of a foul out to a fan on this young season. He was plunked his next time, dinks this one into shallow right for a base knock. Cruz holds up at second base as he had to watch that one hit grass. And a pair of singles for the two banana ball rookies. Runners on first and second with one away for Jackson Olsen. That one fouled towards the stands, not caught by a fan. Jackson has reached on a sprint and a fielder's choice, 0 for 1. up the middle grabbed by Baber behind the back with the glove flip can't get it to Aka and the bags are juiced Chapman. Redemption at long last for Vincent Chapman, and you see a man fired up to come up with that one. How about that from Vince? Josh, official scoring on that last play. Trick play missed by Baber. A big I don't know for my broadcast partner. Apparently going to mark it as a trick play missed four. 
That one into right field. It's a moot point right now. The Bananas walk off the sixth inning and pull within a point of the party animals. As Coxie the hero on his first hit of the season. And Rack leading the walk-off celebration. Cox participating out in the infield grass. 14 walk-offs in 2023. Grabs one here, and we've got a 3-2 lead for the Animals with six innings behind us. Had to pop up in the booth because our dearest of friends over at Zappos, once again this year, will be giving away a pair of shoes in every ball game. Josh Chalevsky, Biko Scala, how can these folks possibly get a chance to get these shoes, Josh? Well, we have a QR code that pops up on our broadcast that fans can scan. And they can also look in the description of our YouTube stream and enter in to win a free pair of shoes. Okay, terrific. I don't see the QR code yet, but I believe you. It will be coming. That's where I, That's why I'm looking around searching my screen for it. Uh, you are right. In the description of the video, it'll be sauced into the comment section as well just a link normally a qr code you are not lying just a link tonight just a link i mean you know another prank we're full of them this oh, evening oh my yeah, goodness just full of them it's what opening night <laughs> what opening night does to us correct yeah uh game is flying by we've got a pinch over 35 minutes left on our two-hour timer and we have three innings to go so the pace Pretty terrific here after the majority of our games got nine innings in within the two-hour time limit a season ago as well. Yeah, and putting Zach Phillips into the ball game sure helps as well for the Bananas. As the last inning, he threw the fastest inning of the night in two minutes and 50 seconds. The two, three, and four for the party animals. Big bender makes it an 0-2 count on Dalton Cornett, who was fooled pretty well there. Tills Phillips, pitch, buddy. Zach out of Texarkana, Texas. And will begin his fourth inning of relief by giving up just a chopper through the four hole. Good pitch. Not a ball hit hard. But as Wee Willie Keeler said, times you just got to hit it where they ain't. And Dalton Cornett is a really stingy hitter for the party animals. And what's important is, even though the party animals have these lefties at the top of the order, such as Dalton Cornett and now the man in the box, Jake Skull, they hit over 300 against left-handed pitching last season. Skull having a great opening night, two for three. An RBI, a double, a run scored, a stolen base. He's doing it all. A true five-tool player in the three-hole. 1-1 one, one count on him here, even though that ball bounced out of the glove of Leroy. And make it one and two. As Colby and Scott Thompson are saying in the chat, it is fans first. The space in between fans and first. That is our buzzword this evening. Now three and one. There it is on your screen right there. Get yourself a chance at a free pair of shoes courtesy of Zappos. As the count runs full on the animal's right fielder. That one misses down and in. Sprint defense. Skull is going to test the Nanners on this one, and he is into second standing safely. There would have been obstruction there either way as Eric Jones Jr., got in Skull's way, and that's why he didn't even bother sliding. He was just assuming that the umpires would make the right call. And it'll be our first two-base sprint of the tour for either side. And he's one of the guys who is the most aggressive when he draws the ball for sprints because he wants to be in scoring position and come around to score, especially with the Bananas cutting the party animals' lead in points down to one last inning. Bananas... Green, part of the infield in, corners in, Olsen about halfway at second, Cox close to halfway at short, and Noah Fisher blasts this one, deep out to left center, it's going to be grabbed by Meadows just in front of the track, 
Cornette can waltz home. Skull will jog to third. Heck of a drive there by Fish, who's hitting the ball well all night long. He's now two for three with the sack fly. Trackman had that one right at 100 off the bat. Yeah, Noah Fisher continues to just batter balls out in the play tonight. And he and the party animals are not going to be upset with that productive out as a pitch gets away from Bill Leroy. And it is going to be Jake Skull coming around and scoring a second run in this inning for the party animals. That is huge for them. Again, this banana's offense has gotten a lot deeper. The party animals are going to need to do more to score, score multiple runs in innings to claim these points, and they've done it here in the top of the seventh. Skied by Tanner Thomas into the stands, not caught by a fan. By the way, that's the second ball off of Fisher's bat tonight. That has been 100 or more miles per hour, according to Trackman. He's having a heck of a debut. That one down and in. Friendly count here, 3-1 to Thomas. And he expands the strike zone. Could have had a sprint instead of 3-2 coming. And it's fouled away. Yeah, and Tanner again, another party animal who batted over 300 against left-handed pitching. In fact, posted a 368 mark against the lefties compared to 286 against righties. He's had those reverse splits all the way back to the Virginia Tech days. Spent three years as a Hokie after a couple at Tallahassee Community College, and the kid out of Fleming Island, Florida, will be content with one base on his sprint. Uncharacteristic wildness from Phillips in his fourth inning of relief here. He had not given up a sprint across his first three innings tonight. Yeah, and with Scooge only going three innings for the Bananas as the starting pitcher, they've had to lean on Phillips a little more than they would have liked to, and he's he's really not a guy that they use to pitch across three and four innings, more of a one to two inning guy. 1-1 one, one count on Garrett Delano, the designated hitter. 0 for 2 with the sack fly tonight. And her off for second throw from Leroy. Oh, it's on the money and in plenty of time. Tanner thought he might have snuck in there. Gary Glover disagreed. And a guy who was 22 for 25 in his stolen base attempts last year, tied for the team lead, is gunned down in his first try this year. Boy, it I don't think there was really any argument there unless he thought he wasn't touched. And Bill Leroy didn't look a bit surprised that he decides to stay at first base. Once again, still not at 100% running speed, recovering from that ankle injury in Milwaukee this past September. But he resides on first as Chase Acuff as the boys bumping as he comes up to the dish. Fans swimming in the stands as well as the pride of St. Petersburg fouls that away. Chase one for three. A run driven in, two scored. There's that big bender, just scrapes the bottom of the zone. O2 coming from Phillips. Chop foul. And this is what makes Chase A Cup a really tough at bat. Again, we've talked about how he was the hardest hitter to strike out back in his college days, even got the flack. And he's able to foul off pitches like that from Phillips. Oh. As now Dave Howell goes across the diamond with the trick play, but Eric Jones Jr. is pulled off the bag, is unable to keep the ball in the glove. And so Chase Acup will actually be able to reach here on, I guess, a trick play missed from Gabe Howell. That's a fact. After the trick play, throw gets EJ off the bag, and he just couldn't squeeze the glove tight enough to keep the banana ball in. Well, he applied the tag to Acup. So Chase reaches on his second trick play missed of the night. Swan lifts this one to right center. DR Meadows there, and will grab it in a casual manner with two runs already in and two party animals on the bags. I landed that, right? All right, guys, I'm down here with Braden and Austin. Here is Drake Toll with some young party animals fans. 
I got Braden and Austin down here at Bico. Josh, let me tell you, I met a lot of passionate fans tonight, but these guys from St. Petersburg, the local kids, one of them's got it right, got the party animals gear on. Can you tell me, Braden, why party animals? I've been a party animals fan since I was born, mainly because my brother likes the bananas, so we need a little household rivalry. Then tell me, Austin, why the bananas are not the greatest party in sports? It's because I've always been a bananas fan. They're the better team, and they got Coach Rack, the best coach out there. All right, let's do a little trivia question here, a little pop quiz. See who is smarter, Party Animals fans or Bananas fans? Seven plus eight, Braden. Fifteen. Explain quantum physics, Austin. Uh -huh. <laughs> Folks, there we have it. Lexi, get in here. Lexi, get in here. Come on, come on, come on. This is the real star of the show here, the Stone family. Lexi, Party Animals or Bananas? You be the deciding vote. Bananas. She says Party Animals. Party on. Vico, Josh, let's send it back to you guys. Illuminating stuff from Drake down there with not just party animals fans, a bananas representative as well. You know, it's really great to get the party animals perspective here on what is bananas television. And I'm sure that the party animals fan, of course, pleased that his guys are up and poised to strike yet again as we enter the bottom of the seventh. A reminder, one more half inning. Of the Zappos shoe giveaway is Jesse Cole announcing that Dakota Stilts All Britain will lead off in a pivotal situation here for the Nanners. Luke Gillespie with his second inning on the mound. And the Nanners down a point will turn to their 10 foot, 9 inch slugger. And after he had four walk offs on the 2023 World Tour, the Bananas turn to Stilts to see if he can spark a rally. Quick, oh, what was that call from Vince? I guess that was a strike. So the count one and two. I was ready to call it a ball. Stilts in an early hole. He barrels that to third, bounced to Acuff, to Baber, to Swan. The triple trick play kicked off by Fisher. A beauty from the party animals infield. A play we have never before seen in banana ball. Noah Fisher gets the grounder and it's bounced to all of the infielders to get stilts out. That is unreal. The first triple trick play in banana ball history. It has been a doozy of a world tour opener tonight. To the top of the order we go. Stilts pinch hitting for Bill Leroy. Now, DR Meadows lines it and robbed of a base knock by his counterpart. That is an 80 grade outfielder. Back on the minor league scouting report when he was in the Detroit Tigers system, Reese Hampton doesn't let a whole lot fall to the grass. And let's talk about Drew Gillespie as well, working very quickly here in the seventh, just seven pitches. And Gillespie sitting at a one minute and 27 second minutes per inning mark. Now Gabe Howell, check swing, 1-1 one, one count. For anybody scoring at home, the triple trick play, five, six, four, three, TPO times three. That one looped into center field. A jam sandwich, and it tastes great for Gabe Howell, who has his first hit of the World Tour. And one for four on the night. And that brings up the innings tying run to the dish. And boy, is it a dangerous man at that. Dan Obers, three for three with three singles. Yeah, was the banana's most dangerous hitter all last season. Actually led the tour in WRC+. Plus. But it's Drew Gillespie who continues to be kryptonite for Dan Oberst as he batted below 200 against the righty. Gets the final out and gets out of the inning in two minutes and 22 seconds. The fastest minnings per in it mark of tonight's contest. And some happy feet for Drew Gillespie with Swan to celebrate. We'll get it down to Jesse Cole. 4-2 lead for the Animals as they win the seventh. Here are your grandma gladiators tonight. And 72 year old Beth. And the name of this promotion is Grandma Gladiators.
They've got their pool noodles. Whoever hits the other one the most is the winner. Grandma's on your mark. Get set. Go. Let's go. Looks like best. Oh, she's going, Martha's going hard. She's already taken off the jacket. Oh, best taking off the shirt. Here we go. We're going hard now. Look at that speed. She's doing circles on her. We've got 20 seconds. Whoa. Finish our first grandma gladiator ever down. Great job. Let's hear it for our two grandmas. Shades of the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail there. Grandma <laughs> took a tough tumble to the hip and was still fighting with the pool noodle from her knees. But a fall down in Grandma Gladiators is an instant disqualification. That was unreal. Unreal. We appreciate the heart there from the grandma who will be our loser tonight. As the best pitcher from a year ago, Danny Hosley, will make his debut. There is that devastating changeup. Taj Porter finds out. Spins back around to hit from the left side for his fourth trip to the dish tonight. And takes the off speed up. Yeah, Danny Hosley led all pitchers with 53 appearances in 2023 for the Bananas. Brooded rudely as Taj Porter will slap this one into right field. But what's impressive about the work of Danny Hosley, 37% of all the batters he faced struck out against him and opponents batted just 184 against him, the lowest mark of any pitcher. That was a superb piece of hitting for Taj Porter. Guy who spent time across four different colleges, Louisiana Lafayette, Pasco Hernando State, Holmes Community College, and then finished up with three years at Southern University in his home state. That was in Baton Rouge. This one out to Rack, who grabs that one. Hit hard, but right to him. Or at least not too far away from him, rather, from Dustin Baber, who's 0 for 4. And that ball really jumped off the bat of Dustin Baber. Looks like it might possibly get over the head of Rack, but luckily, ball kind of died in the air. He backpedaled a little bit, came up with the first out here for Hosley, who now faces off against Reese Hampton. Howell tries to go for another trick play in this contest and struggles with the transition between the legs. So Reese Hampton will reach on another trick play missed from Gabe Howell tonight. Two things you have to credit there. Taj Porter with an excellent jump. As soon as Howell had the bobble on the trick play missed, he never had a chance at Taj at second. And then Reese Hampton's speed is self-explanatory. Pickoff attempt, Taj just barely back in time. Fans have already used their challenge, and there goes Gillum. He throws a smoke bomb onto home plate. I didn't realize that's how we were deciding these things tonight. We will throw on the Riedel headsets once again. Chat with Zach Frangelo. And while the smoke dissipates, we've got you, Zach. We'll take a look at the replay from our folks in Savannah. Bill Leroy loving the smoke. Here it is. Inconclusive. Gonna need to see the front angle. Correct. Here it is. I, I think it's inconclusive. I'm inconclusive. Oh, this is a great angle. Last chance for it to be overturned. Oh, he might be out. Give us that, but wind it back. We've only got 15 seconds. One last look. I think he's out. I think he's out. I he's out. out. The call is overturned. Overturn it. Wow, that is as close as they come. Time to shout out our BTV camera crew. Those were three tremendous angles. It was bang, bang. 
But it looked like the tag got Porter just a hair before that hand hit second base. That's a big second out from Danny Hosley. The Bananas win their first challenge of the 2024 World Tour, and they will still have one going through the rest of this ball game as well. Dalton Cornett off the end of the bat. DR racing in, diving, can't come up with the catch. Hampton read it beautifully. He goes first to third. Cornett follows him to second. And two runners in scoring position with two outs for the ever dangerous Jake Skull, who's two for three on the night. A double, an RBI, and a couple runs scored. Skull trying to do damage early, fouls it off. Cornett now two for four. Big spot for Danny Hosley here. Split trying to invade. The party animals dugout takes back off on his motorized bike. 1-2 to Skoll, lifted out towards right, Alexiades hardly has to move, and Hosley able to strand a pair in scoring position. He holds serve, the Nanners just need one run in the bottom of the eighth to pull within a point of the party animals. Yeah, and that's going to be huge for the Bananas, down two points here. We will see if they can get a run on the board in the eighth. It may be a situation where they opt to use the golden batter before the ninth inning to then try and rally. Back out there, Drew Gillespie, ready for his third inning of relief after Sean Fluke tossed the first five. And it is four, five, six for the Nanners. Deeb, Jones Jr., and Cruz due to swing it. And what's interesting, Deeb and Jones each batted just 231 against Drew Gillespie last season. He really had these guys' numbers as well. And for Rack, having never faced Gillespie, it will surely be a tough at bat for him as well. Broken bat right to Dustin Baber, who finds a seat after he finds the ball in his glove. That was a clean break at the base of the barrel there for Deeb, who is now one for four on the night. And Eric Jones Jr. Two for two with the sprint, an RBI. He walked off the first inning with a double out to right center. And skies this one a mile high to shallow left. 
Tanner Thomas racing in. And there are two down. Just got underneath that ball. It was a home oh. run swing from Eric Jones Jr. for sure. And why wouldn't he try it after homering in George M. Steinbrenner Field last year against the MLB PAA? But skied out to left field. It's Tanner coming down with it. And now we will see if Rat can come up with one mighty swing to put the bananas within a point. He's having a tremendous banana ball debut. The excellent numbers you see on his lower third graphic there. That was his senior season at Biola University back in 2021. But as you foreshadowed, Josh, he had a tough time with Drew Gillespie. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Three pitch K, here's the young professor. And it's a one minute and 25 second inning tied for the 20th fastest inning in banana ball history. In favor of the party animals. But here's the thing about the game of banana ball. In the final inning, every run counts for a point. So this is the time for the Savannah Bananas to shut down the onslaught and the party animals, come back and win this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final inning. So with just over 11 minutes to spare, we enter the ninth. As the young professor says, split with the unique bike riding style there. The party animal is looking to build on their two-point advantage. Every run scored will count as a point. Kyle Lewigs will be... The ring dude for the Nanners, Jake Lealios, will play the same role for the party animals, and he has already removed his jersey. Does that surprise anybody at all? No. Not at all. So it'll be Noah Fisher who leads off the top of the ninth here against Danny Hosley, and if the party animals essentially get anybody on base, you will likely see them use the golden batter. The pride of Madison Heights, Michigan, having a tremendous banana ball debut. He's ahead 2-0. Two, oh. two for three, a couple base knocks and a sack fly. Ahead three balls and no strikes. <laughs> unique batting stance as he watches the heater fly through the zone. Trackman had it at 90. And that one barreled out to left center field. It's big time trouble. Fisher stays red hot. He is going to cruise right on by second base. And belly flop into third with a triple to lead off the top of the ninth. Noah Fisher cannot be stopped for the party animals in his banana ball debut. Three hits, a sack fly, and he's 90 feet away from scoring another point for the animals as well. Trackman had that heater at 91 coming in and leaving his bat at 95. He also has two batted balls over 100 tonight. Tanner Thomas with a healthy hack on what Trackman had as a 92 mile an hour fastball. So Osley reaching back for a little something extra here in a very pivotal spot. Pivotal is not a word. Pivotal is the. Bananas with an interesting infield shift. Everybody but EJ halfway in. The first baseman back towards the grass with the powerful left-handed bat of Tanner Thomas up as another foul ball is not caught by fans. Yeah, and Tanner just two for 19 against Danny Hosley. Most of them ended up resulting in strikeouts, but EJ manning the first base position that way expecting Tanner if he does put the ball in play to pull it right down the line as we get a check swing here and Tanner fortunately holding up there. By the way, it is now a 2-2 count. That was a 1-2 pitch. Our score bug lies to you. Almost lost his feet on the check swing but was able to hold his bat. Peter just misses the inside corner and we were just telling the future. Now it's a full count. Fisher off third, payoff pitch. This is high. It'll be a ribeye for Thomas. 
who turns around and will be content with his second one base sprint in as many trips to the dish. And again, because the party animals have now scored in the ninth inning, that run becomes a point as well. So it goes from a 4-2 ball game to now a 5-2 ball game in favor of the animals. It's a mighty important insurance point there. And a healthy hack and a foul ball from Garrett Delano on what Trackman had as another 92 mile an hour heater. Check swing, he's behind 0-2, as that one not caught by a fan. Delano, a 2018 Collegiate Savannah Banana in his third campaign as a professional party animal. Able to check his swing, hold up on the big 12-6 bender from Hosley. Cut and a miss. Silly swing on the changeup that ended up with plenty of the zone, but that is just how powerful that Vulcan change from Hosley is. Yeah, I mean, that is his go-to pitch and two strike counts. And knowing that Garrett Delano has some holes in his bat, he went with the off-speed stuff. And you see Delano just out in front of that breaker. It's a big first punch out for Danny Hosley, who now has to face Chase Aka. He gets ahead of him 0-1. Goes back to the changeup, grabs a strike. AJ Baseball, hello. Appreciate the high from you. Chat's been tremendous. Really appreciate over 15,000 of you who have joined the over 10,000 here in George M. Steinbrenner Field. Alexiades tracks down a well-struck ball the opposite way from Chase Aka. And now with two outs, it will be the first baseman, Jason Swan. Twenty-one for four on the night. But as the graphic says, he won the second inning with that RBI single back up the middle. And being back in Florida always seems to bode well from Jason Swan, a Jacksonville native. He had a four-hit game while playing in Daytona last season and also returned to his home city of Jacksonville with a three-hit game. Here, however, with an 0-1 count, this one is skied out to right field, and Reese Alexiades will camp under it, and Naruto run into the dugout <laughs> as the Bananas will try and rally in the bottom of the ninth inning. Till it's over. This is the chance for your Savannah Bananas to notch three runs and send it to showdowns or open the season the right way. Get more and win the whole thing. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet and make some noise because this is it! The Bananas have three outs to score three runs. Or else, going back to last year's tour, the Party Animals will make it 10 straight wins. They won nine straight elimination games to take the tour, 34 wins to 33 losses. Of course, it was the opposite record for the Nanners. And the Alios and company back on the dugouts as Dylan Porter, the man who struck out Dalton Malden to secure the win in the season series for the Animals in 2023 will try and make it 10 straight wins against their arch rivals here tonight. Yeah, Dylan Porter split time between the rotation and the bullpen for the party Animals last season. But as they were going on their run to end the tour, he really stepped up in that closer's role for the Animals, nailed down three saves in the month of September, and of course, is always bringing his signature pistol squat pitch out there on the mound. Look at his numbers from last year. Started in the rotation, ended as the team's dominant closer. He closed out three out of those nine games that they won in a row to finish the tour. Three for three in save attempts. First two were in Milwaukee. The last was at Doubleday Field in Cooperstown. And it'll be the most valuable player in the Pioneer League in 2023. Reese Alexiades. 
was in his third and final season with the Ogden Raptors. And in a good banana ball debut, spoiled a bit by fouling out to a fan in his first ever at bat. As that one, yeah, it's the outside corner. Framed there by Cornette. Porter, a power pitcher, 90 to 93 miles an hour with the four seam fastball. Mixes in a curveball slider and changeup. And there's the aforementioned pistol squat, misses the outside corner. And what was crazy too is Chase Acup and Dustin Baber right behind Dylan Porter hit a pistol squat of their own in the field before he fired that pitch in. There goes Reese, trying to steal first base. Throw from Cornette, not in time. That is a massive leadoff man aboard for the Nanners. They need one more guy to reach and then they can bring the game's tying run to the dish. And in his very first banana ball game, Reese Alexiades shows off the IQ, seeing that pitch get away and taking off and stealing first base. And that is key for this rally as now Jackson Olsen comes to the dish. Banana ball IQ in his first ever banana ball game. Not surprising, he's told us he's always been a team first player. And he was just thinking of any way to get aboard there. And has also prided himself on his speed as well, which worked to his advantage. As now Olsen skies the second pitch from Porter in the left center field, and Reese Hampton comes out, comes down with the first out. So Jackson retired. The party animals two outs away from an opening night win. And the lights go down in GMS. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bananas are going to the Golden Batter, stepping up to the plate. Please welcome Dan Oberst. The Largo, Florida kid in his sixth season as a Savannah Banana, third as a pro, will be the first ever Golden Batter in banana ball history, he is already three for four tonight. Shatters his bat, and a flip to second one. Baber to first, double play. The party animals win the opening night five to two. Unbelievable, you get the entrance from Dan Oberston comes up with the gold helmet, swinging the gold bat for the very first time, shatters it, and the party animals are able to turn two and win night one of the 2024 World Tour. That marks 10 consecutive victories for the party animals dating back to last year's tour. And now they will celebrate. What is the party, people? Let's be your 2024 party animal. Starting pitcher, Sean Blue, and catcher, Dalton Cornette. Your pitching staff, Drew Gillespie, Garrett Kaboom, Jake Lealios, Doug Fox, Zach Blankenship, Garrett Toledo, Connor Higgins, Ryan Rodriguez, Brett Helton, and Dylan Porter. That infield with our lovely gingers, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, Jordan Hussein, Noah Fisher, Jason Swan, and Bryson B -B 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 Luba. Our reserve catcher tonight, Taj Porter and Bronson Ballho. That studly outfield of Jake Skull, Reese Hampton, and Tanner Tinder Thomas. And what about that coaching staff? Pitching coach Isaac Hess, hitting coach Anthony Cremato, and myself, head coach Mike Vavasis. Let's go!
Shark lets everybody know the party continues out on the party plaza. We have a treat for you here. Down to Drake Toll with Party Animals head coach Mike Vivasis. I'm in right here. Uh. Uh. Look, Coach Mike Mavasis, Vava. A little party never what? Never killed nobody. You got to fight for the right to what? Party. I como se dice. Party. It's pretty easy. Opening night is now 10 straight for the party animals who took Tampa. Look, Coach, I saw it, that third base side. You have people in banana shirts rooting for the party animals. Talk about the energy right now. You know, it's contagious. I mean, just banana ball itself is insane. But out here, the fans, we're starting to get some more party fans. They went crazy for us and just loving every moment of it. Coach, the new guys in the dugout, like the Garrett DeClue. I think that dude danced more than anybody else. That energy is just different right now. Oh, yeah, the new guys and the energy they bring is just next level for us. And it's just so exciting to have a group of guys willing to do whatever you want to do on a baseball field whenever we ask. Skip, how does this set the tone for 2024? Oh, it's, it's huge for us, obviously, winning the last nine to take the tour last year and then coming into night one and, and having a great game. I mean, this is just party animals are on the rise. Party animals are on the rise. Coach, let's close it up right there with this win tonight. I, to me, it legitimizes just how good the party animals were in 23. They're coming back for more in 24. You talk about the growth of fans. This team's on a new level, even, even based on last year. Yes, sir. I mean, we're just growing, and, and, and the fans are enjoying what we bring, and our guys genuinely love it, so we're super excited about it. Biko, Josh, party on, fellas. Yes, sir. Go party Thank on. you, Drake and Vava, on a night that Ryan Cox – what are Dude. we doing? Come it's on. like, it's like people don't know there's a camera there. Uh, on. on a night where Ryan Cox ties the yeah, bananas – Trick play record with five of them. That's an individual record, okay? of course. Uh, Toy Moyer okay. Okay. breaks the Good. banana ball record okay. for most the times thump? walking in front of the same interview. He did it twice within about 15 seconds. It's a remarkable feat from Toy Moyer, of course. He will definitely be trying to break that more this season for certain. And these are the kind of advanced stats that we've been tracking in banana ball. I will shortly log them in one of my spreadsheets tonight. And Biko, let's also touch on this game, a 5-2 to two party animals victory. We saw a lot of dominance from the party animals, but we saw so many encouraging banana ball signs. A two-hour and one-minute game. 14 trick plays between the bananas and the party animals when last season the teams averaged eight per game. And, of course, we saw four innings that were thrown under three minutes and two of which were thrown under two minutes. Yeah, that is what you love to see. Banana ball is so back, and it is so back better than ever.